Hey guys, it's Tom Higginson from the band Plain White Tees, and this is I Effin' Love That Song podcast. Each week I'll have an amazing songwriter join as a special guest to discuss their stories behind some of your favorite hit songs. Tim Lopez, the guitar player and singer of Plain White Tees, along with myself as the singer and guitar player of Plain White Tees, has written a lot of amazing songs for the band. Sunlight, Body Parts. <laughs> Some people might not know you wrote these ones, you know? Um, True. Heavy Rotation, uh, Love Again, Here Come That Sunrise, No Imitations off the latest album, The Giving Tree, one of our top five songs, most popular songs. But, dude, Rhythm of Love. I fucking love that song. <laughs> so let's, let's talk yeah. about Rhythm of Love. I probably know a lot of the stories but can I start by telling you, and you probably know all my stories as well, but the first time I ever heard that song, I remember it very well. We were starting to turn in demos for Wonders of the Younger, and we were out to breakfast with Matt Harris, our a and guy, and after the breakfast, we went to his car, and you guys played me the demo. I think you had just played it for him maybe that morning or something for Rhythm of Love, and I was like, damn dude this is awesome and then I had a session that day a writing session and the whole time I was like kind of hitting you up like dude you got to send me that song like I just that's funny just yeah besides just being in the same band and like dude that's really good like I'm I'm happy that we have this song it was more of like a fan thing I just I really wanted to hear it again because I really loved it you know off the Mm -hmm. first listen that's Um, awesome man yeah, dude. I do remember that very vividly. And I remember, yeah, I feel like, what else did we have in that batch? You were playing demos too. I feel like you had, it was either, was it like Boomerang or something? I think Boomerang was one of the early ones for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I remember listening to quite a handful of the songs that, that ended up on that record in the car that morning, which was a, you know, we, ha- we have so many moments like that in the band where there's like a, a pivotal thing that happens and it, it always kind of it's pretty cemented in your mind that little memory and I, I do remember that morning very clearly yeah man I knew you were going to pick that song because some of the other I ones mean, we, we probably battled on just to get them on records <laughs> well I, I mean I must say you know you do have your your reputation amongst the T's as what what do we call you your songs <laughs> dude I don't know I mean uh sad bastard songs oh sure sure. (laughs) Sure. well because a lot of the songs that you turn in you tend to go to your more kind of brooding side when you write a lot which is you know again usually we all turn to our guitars to write a song when you know there's something weighing on us right which is totally natural but this song was kind of the first one that i heard from you where i was like damn like this is happy this is fun and it's not just like, it was really catchy, of course, but it wasn't just catchy to be catchy. It was actually really well-written and some really beautiful lyrics and everything. So, so yeah, definitely stood out to me instantly as like, wow, Tim, like, this is next level Tim, Tim Lopez right here. No, oh, right on, man. Yeah, I, I mean, sad bastard music. Yeah, that's, that's my thing. But <laughs> it's not that I wanted to. I just was kind of stuck in a, in a sour spot for, for a long, long time. And then that was kind of like a fresh turning over a new leaf and feeling pretty happy about some stuff in life. Well, I mean, I was just going to say, if you don't mind, tell the story of of writing it, you know, what was going on. Like I said, I probably know this one, but I feel like, uh, and we've talked about this before, that that has to be maybe to date the easiest song I ever wrote. Hmm. Like you've had moments like that before. I know we've talked about how quickly some stuff comes to you and I just remember I wrote it at my at my parents house in Santa Barbara it's definitely got like a kind of California vibe to the tune but I was home in Santa Barbara and I I just don't remember like struggling at all over any lyric over any melody or chord change and then like the minute the verses and chorus were written it was like the bridge was just kind of like beamed into my brain You know, it's like one of those things where like the answer was already there, you know, and that doesn't happen that much. You know, we've written a lot together where 
will be sitting over one line or even like the proper word for a line and we'll be like all right everybody like kind of just go off and think for a second you know just like this those sessions that we had at your house in malibu where for a minute the track is just you know or for like an hour the track is just playing and everybody's just sitting what's a cool you know wrap up to this line or whatever this song, I honestly did not struggle at all. I just penned it really quickly. I had the idea for the stacked harmonies and the bop ba section, like the minute that part came, it was like just so flowy that I kind of, like a lot of people I've heard talk about songwriting, did just feel like that was kind of like one of those gift songs where you're like, oh, thanks universe, you know? And then of course, like it becomes, you know, at least to date, my most successful song. So, and then it's always so frustrating post that type of experience to go back to the grind of songwriting at times, whether it be that you don't know what to write about, you know, sometimes it's, that, that's the biggest chore is like, I don't really feel like I have anything to say or anything unique to say. You're always just like, you know, ear open listening for some great lyric or something but even that doesn't mean that you're going to be emotionally invested in that lyric you know so I guess it was that I was emotionally invested and ready and then also the universe just handed it to me you know awesome yeah and you know it's interesting I know based off on writing with you you're very lyric centric and that song is not necessarily doesn't have anything too deep or too out of the ordinary lyrically it just all flows nice and it's all just it all works you know yeah so like i can tell you didn't overthink it it was just the perfect like oh yeah that's good go with it and yeah and that's it you know yeah. it's super funny i think that i'm very lyric centric and i i will call people out like yourself for a lyric i don't like and then jenna my wife uh for those of you who don't know I'll be sitting there singing a song and she'll be like, what did you just sing there? Like, that is not the lyric. <laughs> and, and I started to realize that I'm not that lyric centric when it comes to songs that I like. I don't know all the words and I obviously don't pay super close attention, you know, to what they are. Yeah. So, <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. It's definitely something like a, a lesson that I've, I've learned almost more in the last like couple of years that, I want the lyrics to be great, but geez, man, they don't matter that much in a lot of instances, you know? Yeah. Don't you wonder sometimes what makes you like a song? Yes. It's, if it's not the lyrics, it's not necessarily always melody or anything. Sometimes it's just literally the feeling, the the progression, the sound of it, you know? It's always I know. different. Yeah. I think about, it's been a couple years now, but remember that, uh, that Flo Rida song, My House, that came out a couple years ago? Yeah, Dude, like, you love that song. Yeah. That's the kind of song that I'm like, <laughs> I am not relating to this. I like this, you know, that this is not my vibe. I, I don't think that way. Like, welcome to my house. But I remember it coming out and just feeling like everything was working in a cool way. And I just dug it. I don't know. It's a strange yeah, thing. I, I, it's like your hips don't lie for me. What do I relate to? Hips don't lie. But yet... The song comes on and it's like, oh my God, it's perfect, you know? Yeah, that's for, pretty funny. For me, yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, dude, yeah. So, so can you tell the story? I know you're obviously moved on plenty with your wife, Jenna, and everything now, but can you tell the story of the girl you were, the you were dating somebody at the time? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the girl that I was dating at the time, I knew since I was in elementary school, which is a very, very strange little bit of information about the song is that she uh I was older than her in elementary school maybe like I would be like say sixth grade and her in fourth or something like that which for some reason in those grades it kind of mattered like you know oh yeah kind of stuck to your class when it came to like who you're interested in so a girl that much younger you're kind of like eh, yeah 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 but she used to call my parents house at that time in my life and like, hey, is Tim home? I wanna like, you know, and so she'd get me on the phone and we'd like talk and so I, I knew she had a, like a big crush on me then. 
and then yeah i think we ended up meeting up in santa barbara you know i i guess i would have been what like 26 27 yeah. something like that again so you're talking about 18 years later reconnecting with somebody from your childhood and then we dated for a short amount of time all throughout the making of of big bad world our album yeah. that we made in malibu and yeah i mean obviously being respectful of the relationship i'm in super sweet girl like great family very good hearted and i guess i at, at that time i when we went back out on tour to do big bad world I wasn't really ready to do any sort of long distance relationship while we toured our asses off. And so the relationship did end up fizzling out, but I wrote the song after that. So it was like, you know, mm. I, I still have this feeling like this was a very valuable person in my life and thought like, you know, maybe there will be something in the future. And because of the nature of our touring business, it was kind of like, well, we may only have a small amount of time together when I visit, you know, back to Santa Barbara, but you'll be mine for that amount of time. And that was like, that was it, you know? Yeah, it didn't really work out for us beyond that. She loved the song. It's kind of like you and Delilah, where it was like, I love this. See you later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I know that feeling. Yeah. Um, but I mean, me life has, you know, crazy twists and turns certainly has for me so i'm so grateful for the whole thing but you know i'm also very grateful for where i am so it's not like i look back on that relationship with any sort of like anything it's just the song right. turned out the way it did you know totally as you look at jenna like yeah don't worry jenna <laughs> <laughs> No, she's inside um, watching a some period piece show about queens or something. Boring. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, I've never asked you this question. Rhythm of love. What was, did you Why? just, well, you know, sometimes we write and it's like we have a title in mind or an idea in mind that we kind of write to get to, you know, you kind of figure out how to, how to work around it to get to that moment. Did you have that as a title idea or no. anything? Or was that just like what, what you sang as you were writing it? Yeah, it was. So fortunate mm. enough to just like kind of get it, you know? Like, you know how sometimes your brain will just spit out stuff? Oh, yeah. You know, stream of consciousness. Yeah, I know that I started with the verses. Like it started in order. It wasn't like I got the chorus first or anything like that. So... Yeah, because think, let's see, the the real like lyrical connection stuff to rhythm of love starts in the second verse, right? Sure. So the yeah. first verse, I think that I just kind of like worked out, which was kind of like, hey, I'm I'm feeling elated kind of about this girl. And then somehow got the rhythm of love line and then started tying rhythmic stuff into the lyrics you know later um sure yeah man yeah just kind of a gift you know it's hilarious. weird because i i think that that statement like or that little phrase like it's kind of cheesy you know <laughs> like you know the song uh, that the scorpions did rhythm of love oh yeah yeah the sure. rhythm of love you know it's like super cheeser and right. I guess that's the only thing that I have to compare it to. So I'm like, I didn't, like you said, I didn't question it. I didn't really like push back on myself when it came to the lyrics. So I got that phrase and I was like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what's interesting, dude. So I've never, I mean, maybe I have subconsciously, but I've never really put it together with the, my heart beats like a drum guitar string to the strum. I never equated that to rhythm of love. Never <laughs> one. Really? Like it just Until sounded now. like it just sounded like oh this is cool like a cool, mus cool musical kind of analogy of right yeah 
yeah, I never really thought that you like, oh, he got Rhythm of Love, so then he had to make some musical references. I never made that connection in my head. Yeah, which I did, but I guess it didn't matter, you know. Right. It's another well, part it's about lyrics, like, just kind of being like, does it really matter that you pine over that stuff, you know? Right. Or does it just have to sound good and, yeah. you know, make you feel, yeah. yeah. Cool. I was going to ask another question about that song. I'm always impressed with songs when someone does something that I would not have thought to do, you know, mm. like why the hell would they do that? That's so cool. You have, we, you know, it's pretty typical st song structure, you know, a little riff, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge. And then you go to a different part. You bring in the ba ba part, mm -hmm. which is kind of like a bridge, but you've just done the bridge. So you kind of introduce this new moment this like Beach Boys vocal breakdown thing right. after you've already done the bridge and that's not a very typical move. But of course, it's like one of the catchiest, coolest parts of the song. Right. So what made you, and you mentioned it kind of earlier, you touched on it that you just kind of came up with it and it was there. But like, were you thinking it needed a new part or was it just flowing that much that it just kind yeah, of- Yeah, man, I guess just flowing that much. Cause I, you when you put it that way i mean yeah i do pay attention like i'm sure you do very diligently to song structure like mm -hmm. we are you're a student of the game you know how other artists have done it throughout time and then you also have lauren probably in your ear talking to you about you know song structure and uh and so i am that way too in almost anything, you know, we're here in quarantine uh, here in Texas, but like I've been working and trying to write and like, I definitely think about things in, in a very structural way, which I'm not sure is always healthy, you know? Right. You know, maybe it'd be nice to break out of the box a little bit from time to time, but no, I, I don't know why I have basically two bridges. Either one could, you know, you probably could have gotten rid of the actual bridge Maybe it's that the, it goes back to the verse progression though. So mm -hmm. um, you might not have gotten the bridge release from the bop ba section. You know, the bridge goes to that E major seven with the capo on, but you know what I'm saying? It's like a major seven yeah. chord. That kind of triggers you into feeling like, oh, we're taking off into the bridge, right? You know what I'm saying? But the, Bop ba section comes back down to the verses, like verse progression, and maybe it wouldn't have given you the same sensation. But anyway, I don't know. I just, it just happened. Like I said, I, I already heard it occurring in my brain before I, I even figured it out. You know, it was like, hmm. oh, I'm going to do this kind of like very mellowing bop ba. Like, I, that's not something I would normally do, but. It totally. just all kind of made sense with the with the song at the time, and I don't know. Could even execute it, it by myself, like because yeah. I I didn't demo it until I went down to Nick Rucker's and and he helped me stack all the vocals and stuff. But I just knew it was what it was going to do, you know. Sure. I was just thinking, like I was trying to think about it in my own mind, and you had that bridge, and the bridge kind of goes over it, you know, all your tears. We'll dry on after I'm, you know, you couldn't have gone right to the verse. So you're probably like, just maybe it was subconsciously like, okay, I need a, a little bit of a move here. I need to do something. I don't know. I don't know why, but it feels so good. And I do feel like, you know, talking about the structure and things like that are, of course, very important, and very key. But sometimes when there is kind of a break in the mold like that, it can be if it's done well it's like the most refreshing thing and sure i think in that song i mean you've already got a hit going into that moment but then to me that's the moment where it's like dude like that was like the the flex on the already awesome song you know what i mean yeah interesting that's funny yeah and yeah. i think that's great i think that's you know i mean that's kind of what took it from a great song to like a really great song like a hit song you know sure sure who knows but again what it, what it takes yeah, to, to make it's a hit not song. the kind of thing you're thinking when you're writing it you were just instinctually 
navigating your way through it, I guess. But. Yeah, not at all. You're just like, you know, my dad's in the other room, like grinding teeth, you know, he's, he's a dental technician. <laughs> and it's like, right. I really like the sound of that one. You know, it's like, <laughs> you're like, ah, you, you don't know what you're getting, you know, right. Till it all works out. Like you and I know too, we've had some of these songs on the record and out and they're still not hits until something else happens, you know? So right. it's like the song itself has the potential to be marketed well and to sell a lot because it's a good song. You know, it's like, you still don't know what it is that's really making hits. What if you got a couple other ones, you know? It's like, we've had songs that we've all felt strongly about that didn't make the same impact. You right. Know? So it's, it's really tough to, wrap your head around that stuff but right i always talk about like all the bands we've toured with and all of those you know especially some of those scene bands had such good songs and were such powerful live acts and everything but somehow never really cracked at that level so it's mm -hmm. definitely a lot of luck involved a lot of you know the right marketing the right place at the right time so, yeah, yeah i mean I, I i have spent some time thinking about the fact that if we didn't have Delilah would we have gotten one two three four in rhythm you know it's like we fought for those songs to make it as far as they did you know top five songs or whatever but I think Delilah really paved it for us paved the way for those songs so which is why we need more hits in the vein of our other hits yeah I'm working on it I know I've been telling you I'm going to send you demos for like the past three weeks but they're coming, man. Just wait. Can't rush greatness, man. <laughs> exactly. Um, I was uh, going to say, when you, like, in that car, when, I, when you first pushed play and played me Rhythm of Love, what were your thoughts? Because I know for me, a lot of times I will be like, dude, this is the best song I've ever written. And then the second I, like, show somebody. You're like. That's the moment where I'm like, oh, God, that's I fine. know. Or, I know. It's so a weird you have, thing. When you were like in that car and finally like showing it to people, like what was your vibe? What was your feeling? Well, I hope that, uh, that I'm speaking truth when I say like, I, I tend to have a very humble approach to turning stuff in. It makes me nervous to hit play a lot of times. And I luckily had, you know, I had played it for a few other people that said that they really loved the song. And I trusted the opinions, like Reed, for one, like doesn't even mm -hmm. like that type of music. And he was like, man, you, you've really written something great here. So um, I felt good about the song, but still nervous. Man, I, I, I can't really remember exactly if I was like, you know, like you said, like sometimes until you hit play and it all becomes like it's out there, you're like, oh, shit, that lyric is not that great. I don't right. know if I remember feeling that way about that song. You know, like, do you remember Dave's reaction to that song when we were like working on it? You know, because I think I sang the song a little bit differently than I tend to on some other stuff. Like it's a okay. little bit kind of, you know, how Mikey always like does his, is it Aaron Neville or whatever? Yeah, of course. Right. Like he is in fact kind of mocking the way that I chose to do the song just in, in, a, in a playful way. But like I sang the song a little bit different, right? Mm -hmm. But what and was our, Dave's, I don't remember Dave's mocking. I of just it remember, whatever. like, I think Dave was like bothered by like the lightness of the song huh. and probably by the, the early like vocal performance of it. And so, I could assume, and, and I can't really remember exactly, but I, I think that there was probably times where I was like nervous about what it was, but at the same time, it's like, you got enough people saying, this is great, man, then you just are plowing ahead and let it all happen, you know? Yeah, I definitely feel like as a writer, you don't know everything you write, you basically kind of think is great, but you don't know until other people tell you, you know, you really yeah. don't. Yeah, it's very true. Any stories real quick about, you know, we obviously Ian Kirkpatrick produced that song, huge, amazing producer. 
friend of ours. Do you have any memories of being in the studio? I know you already had the demo that was very much like the way we did it in the studio. But do you remember anything specific what we're working with Ian on that song, anything he brought to it? Man, it was a very weird one because Ian is so talented and he's great at like taking songs to like a new place. You know what I'm saying? And and I feel like oh, yeah. with the demo, like, uh, man, I, I don't even know if I still have the original demo. I, I would like have to dig through emails or something. I don't know. But like, sure. it was so close. Like, I feel like one of the biggest things Ian did was just like strip out some of the real instruments that me and Nick did and like, you know, plug in fake bass, you know, so it would be sure. more punchy and round you know, more controlled to make the song sound a little bit like crisper and, and sparkle a little bit more for radio. Because if, if not, sure. it would have, you know, it had, it still had like a demo feeling to it. But I know that we used quite a few tracks from the demo on the finished product. So I feel like it really kind of messed with Ian because he's probably wanted to just have the whole thing and, and do it. But I think that, uh, in the meantime, like leading up to it, the time between, you know, demo and, and the re uh, recording it in your studio, got some heavy demo-itis and didn't <laughs> want to let go of even like certain little like vocals, I think we cut and put in there and didn't re-sing because it was like, yeah. ah, that just has like a nice magic to it. And so I never really got to start from scratch with Ian I feel like that would have been a better way I know you've done that a lot and had good results I feel like that would have been a more enjoyable process to watch him work on one of my songs because this was kind of like this is my baby and don't don't mess it up you right. know kind of thing but yeah I remember him when he made you re-sing it and I remember thinking, dude, this guy's crazy. Like the vocal take was great on the demo. You know, of course, I'm like Captain Demoitis, you know. But I do remember then hearing, oh man, it sounds better. And granted, like you said, we definitely did. I remember taking certain parts from the demo into yeah. the vocal take. But overall, I was like, that was one moment where I was like, okay, trust the producer because we definitely got a better overall take than yeah was there you know yeah. where I didn't I, think that was possible because I loved it already but yeah it's uh it's a shame that that guy's so big time now that it would be very hard to get studio time <laughs> with him <laughs> dude I know I brought it up to him about maybe doing when we were making parallel universe you know and I was like dude would you want to do a song write a song he's like dude I can totally down to write but like there's no way I can produce because I'm just so already behind on stuff he's working on production wise he's like wow yeah it's, it's crazy. crazy to think that you know i know that he was already established and talented when we worked with him but definitely one of his first big successes right oh yeah 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 i think awesome. he, he still credits us as kind of that pushing him over the edge of like finally getting into that you know the big leagues or whatever you call it yeah you know? that's awesome yeah yeah, man. Super talented guy. Mm -hmm. Done amazing stuff. Very ambitious. Well, cool, man. I, I think that's kind of covers it for Rhythm of Love. Let's see anything else we're forgetting about. I mean, I don't know if I ever said this, but like, thanks for writing that song, dude. <laughs> like for our careers and our band, that was a time, you know, I was going through a ton of personal stuff at that moment and was doing my best to write you know, some great songs and everything, but you really kind of came in and were able to, you know, kind of command that moment at that time when I think the band needed you. So yeah, thanks, dude. interesting. Oh, dude. I mean, I, I, I did one of these, uh, for, you know, for the high school nation thing that interview the other day, and I was definitely credited oh, with, with a lot. So yeah, I mean, Thank it's you. always very mutual. It's nice to have you know multiple writers in a band pick up slack when when needed but i could only hope that we just uh, are gifted with more 
very special songs that that take us to another level man it'd be awesome but i appreciate you saying that well hey good talking to you yeah cool idea for a podcast hopefully you yeah. get some awesome guests and uh i'll be watching <laughs>